Okay, so I would like to go over with you an example of how to factor a type 1 trinomial. First of all, how can you tell if it is a type 1 trinomial? Um, and the example that we'll look at right here uh, is x squared minus x minus 20. So first of all, I know it's a trinomial because it has three terms, an x squared, a minus x, and a negative 20. Um, and when I look at this, if I'm asked to factor this, first of all, I don't see a greatest common factor. Uh, because this is a 1 in front of this x squared, there's a negative 1 in front of this x, and a negative 20. There's nothing besides 1 that will go into all three of those numbers. Okay, so I can't use um, greatest common factoring strategy to factor this. Um, if I want to slice and dice it or use uh, factoring by grouping, that won't work either because there's three terms here, um, and to slice and dice it, I need an even number of terms so that I can actually cut it into two pieces. I can't do that here. So I recognize that there's three terms here um, and that it might be then a trinomial type factoring. Uh, what makes it type one? Um, we'll talk more about this later, but for now just know that all type one trinomials have a leading coefficient um, or the number in front of the x squared term is one, okay? So later on we'll look at some type two trinomials where this number here is not one, it's something else other than one. Okay, so we want to factor this, which means that we want to break this up into two components being multiplied together. So in order to do that, I'm going to first set up my brackets. So I set up my brackets, and I want to get this x squared term. So at the beginning of both of my brackets, in order to get an x squared back when I go in the opposite direction and expand, I have to have an x at the beginning of this bracket and then the x at the beginning of this bracket, because I know that x times x will give me that x squared back. Now the tricky part is trying to figure out what numbers will give us um, this negative 1 in front of the x in the middle and this negative 20 when I multiply my two numbers together at the end. So in order to figure out those two numbers, um, I'm going to use the acronym MAN. M stands for multiply, A stands for add, and N stands for my numbers. And I want to look for two numbers that will multiply to this value here, which is negative 20 my constant term, and I want to find two numbers that will add to my middle term because I know when I'm simplifying this, um, when I go in the other direction, I'm going to add together those two middle terms. So my middle term has to add to negative 1. So I need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 1. So in order to do that, I'm going to think about the factors of 20. Now, this is, I'm just writing this out so you can see what's going on in my head. Some of you will find this helpful to write out. Some of you will be able to do this in your head without having to write it out. So it kind of depends on where you're at. Um, so for right now, just so that you can see my thought process, if I think about factors of 20, I usually start at one. So one times 20 gives me 20. Two times 10 gives me 20. Three doesn't go into 20, so I'm not gonna include that one there. Uh, but four does, because four times five is equal to 20. Um, 5 times 4 is equal to 20, but that's already accounted for here, okay? So here are my factors of 20. Um, so I know that some combination here of these numbers is going to have to give me negative 20. Um, and some combination here also has to add to negative 1. So when I look at these numbers, the 4 and the 5 stand out to me because I know that if I take negative 5 and I add 4 to negative 5, that is going to equal negative 1. Okay, so let's test it out. If I have negative 5 and I times it by positive 4, I get negative 20, which is what I wanted. If I take negative 5 and I add it to 4, I get negative 1, which is what I wanted. So the numbers that work in this situation should be negative 5 and 4 because they multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 1. So I'm going to take those two numbers and I'm going to put them into my bracket. So my first bracket is going to be x minus 5 and my second bracket is going to be x plus 4. Okay, so my next step then is just to check to see if this worked because here is my expanded form, here is my factored form, they should be equivalent to each other. So if I just want to double check to make sure this worked, I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper and I'm actually going to foil this out to see if I get this back. So if I have x minus 5 times x plus 4, I'm going to do x times x, which gives me my x squared, x times 4, which gives me my 4x, negative 5 times x, which gives me negative 5x, and negative 5 times 4, which gives me my negative 20. And when I add together my two middle terms, 4x minus 5x is equal to negative 1. So I get x squared minus 1x minus 20, 
which is what I started with. So I know that the numbers that I found here um, using this little trick, um, my man trick, um, helped me to be able to find the numbers that I would use in the factors so that I can rewrite this expanded form in factored form where I have two things in brackets being multiplied together. So hopefully this example helps you um, just to come, you can come back into it, see how we did it again. Um, and you can use this as, um, as something to look at when you're working on some of your practice questions on how to factor type one trinomials.